Here with me now, one of those senators who will vote on Supreme Court confirmation, Senator Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, great to have you, Senator. First, let me just get your response to, to, to this line, this sort of, I find it strange line from some of your Republican colleagues about, well, you know, we'll listen to the courts and the courts will decide. And we also need to get this justice on the court because the court's going to decide the election as if that's a kind of fait accompli. What do you, what do you think when you hear that? So, you know, Let's start with Donald Trump. When Donald Trump says that he is not necessarily going to accept the will of the voters, he's flirting with treason. He's saying peaceful transition of power doesn't matter to him. All that matters to him, once again, is Donald Trump and whatever Donald Trump wants. And for Republicans, once again, to step up, these Republican senators, to enable him in that, to support him in that, and to start to talk about the November 3rd election as if this isn't about voters getting their choice, but it's about Supreme Court justices getting their choice, means that they are a party to it. And that means to me that come November 3rd, we need to hold them all accountable. And when I say hold them all accountable, I mean Donald Trump. I mean those Republican senators. I mean those Republicans up and down the ballot. And we need to not just beat them by a little bit. The idea that they can go litigate when it's close. I mean, beat them big. That's what we got to do. You know, the, the, there was, after the death of uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there's a sort of question, open question about, okay, well, what now? And you, relatively short order, it looked like Mitch McConnell assembled the votes he needed to move forward. Lindsey Graham has assured us that sight unseen, the nominee has the votes. Um, and then the question, you're, you're shaking your head. The, By the uh, way, keeping a new meaning to the word advice and consent, yes, what exactly. the Constitution of the United States requires, right? Lindsey Graham has simply said, Donald Trump has my proxy on this. Senate doesn't need to look at it. If the president's good, Lindsey Graham is good. Man, there's a man with a spine, a spine kept in a box somewhere else, because he certainly doesn't have it to exercise for himself. Well, then let me, let's talk about spine and about fighting here. I mean, there, there is some sense, I, I get that there's no magic button, and I get that they probably have the votes. But there is some sense of like, what do you do, right, as a Senate minority? Do you not agree to unanimous consent? Do you insist on quorum calls? Do you not do vote for judges? But my, my understanding is the last 24, 48 hours, all that stuff has happened, right? I mean, the Senate is functioning normally. I think there was a confirmation vote on a district judge today, 93 to 2. I, I'm not sure how you voted. Um, but there is kind of normal business happening. Like, explain to me why that is happening. Look, we need to use every tool. And there are a lot of tools that Democrats have to try and fight this. We got to be strategic about how we use them, but it can't be business as usual in the Senate. We need to think seriously about everything we can do to try to slow this down and to show how illegitimate this whole process is. Look. The continuing resolution could have been voted on yesterday, but we didn't. We said, nope, we're going to run it for the full length of time that it takes. And yeah, it'll be voted on, but it's going to be next Wednesday. We're going to pull this out. That's why I'm still here in Washington. Mm. We're going to use every tool we've got. But grassroots energy is crucial in this kind of fight as well. The more energy injected into this, the more nervous the Republicans are going to get. Look, remember back in 2017, the Republicans thought they had the votes to repeal health care for millions of Americans, and they didn't. Right. They blinked. And it's in large part because people stood up and said no. Well, to me, that's what this is. This is another fight over the vote to repeal health care for millions of Americans that's going to be in front of the Supreme Court in November. So we need to fight just as hard as we did back then, because now the stakes are even higher. So I want to ask about the ACA, and I'm so glad you raised it. I, I meant to ask this to the speaker the other night, and I'm kicking myself for two days that I didn't. So I'm going to ask you, and you may say, well, th th this is better directed to the speaker, but I'll ask you anyway. Am I crazy, or could everyone agree to put one sentence in this CR that's going to pass that just repeals the mandate from the ACA and then makes the case before the Supreme Court utterly moot anyway, and everyone can walk away from this insane 
preposterous Rube Goldbergian bad faith argument that they're making over there, but also risks destroying the ACA? Can we do that? So listen, I'm all for creative thinking. We need creative thinking right now. But understand, Chris, that is not going to stop the Republicans. They want to take away pre-existing conditions. I mean, they've got multiple grounds that they're moving on here. The only way we're going to stop them is the same way we stopped them in 2017. We're just going to have to fight them. We're going to have to fight them everywhere, including on the floor of the Senate. And that means right now, every one of these Republican senators who's up for re-election and everyone trying to get elected, those Republicans need to be put to the question multiple times a day. Why are you helping Donald Trump take away health care from tens of millions of people? Why are you participating in a process that Republicans and Democrats both know is illegitimate? We need to be fighting back. A final question for you is about relief. Um, you know, the, the, the HEROES Act passed the House uh, trillions of dollars back in May. Uh, a whole yeah. bunch of extensions of, of programs that were in the CARES Act, and also a lot of money for, for municipal and state governments, which is really necessary. Uh, a, a far, far smaller and more limited version past the Senate. They haven't come to an agreement. I, I feel like it's weirdly disappeared from the national conversation that there are millions of people in terrible shape right now. Like, unemployment's running out. Uh, the, these jerry-rigged patches the president unilaterally signed are running out. The, people are in tough shape. Like, the government should be doing more, right? Yeah. You know, I'm so glad you asked about this. Families are struggling so much. Uh, 200,000 people have now died. Uh, it, and... And as you say, unemployment's running out. People are being moved out of their apartments. Foreclosures are going forward. Kids can't get back into school. Parents are struggling to try to keep up if they have a job, trying to keep up with work and their, their families. Every part of this is headed in the wrong direction. And it is imposing real pain on the people of this country. As you know, the House passed a relief package. It's been four months ago now. And Mitch McConnell said he didn't feel any real urgency. And boy, did he make that clear. Because when the Republicans finally did move, it was with this tiny little package that was loaded with poison pills that they knew would never go forward. So the Republicans have clearly decided that their path to victory is not through trying to help people and then stand on their records. Their path to victory is to see if they can keep people from voting, get that election closer than it otherwise would be, and then steal a Supreme Court seat so that if it goes to the Supreme Court, right. they will still be in power. This is a naked grab for power. It is a page out of the playbooks of dictators everywhere, and we need to put a stop to it. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, who is still there in Washington, D.C., as you see behind you. Thank you for making the time. Thank you.